Okay, in this example, we're going to do a little wire cutting problem. So we've got a 20 inch wire and we're going to cut it into two pieces and we're going to make that into two squares. We want to figure out what's the minimum possible sum of the two areas. So uh, one thing, you know, to maybe clarify, we're not necessarily cutting these into two equal pieces, okay? So if we were making them into two equal pieces, everything would sort of already, you know, uh, be determined. All right, so there's my two squares. Let's suppose one of them has a side length of x, so it's x all the way around. And let's suppose that the other one has a side length of y. Okay, again, they don't have to be the same. So again, you know, I'm just labeling things ge generically. Um, this is, you know, this is what I want to find. Um, so if you think about the area, you know, the area of these two squares, and again, that's what we want to minimize, we would just take x times x, so we would get x squared. And then we would take y times y, so we would get y squared. And again, this is the function that we want to minimize. So eventually, I'm going to have to take a derivative of this. But first, we want to again just get it down to a single variable, either x or y. And, you know, the thing we haven't related it, to, uh, you know, the information we haven't used is the fact that we have 20 inches. So, you know, that means we've used 20 inches total around, you know, the edges. Well, so really, it just means when we add up the perimeters of these two squares, it has to equal 20. So the perimeter of the uh, first square would just be x plus x plus x plus x. So that would give us 4x. And then y plus y plus y plus y. That would be 4y. Again, we know that has to equal 20. So this is going to be our constraint in this problem. So we could uh, uh, divide both sides by 4 just to make the numbers a little bit nicer. Then we would get x plus y equals 5. And I don't know, I always like to have x's, so I'm going to solve this for y. And y would equal 5 minus x. All right, so now I'm going to plug that into this formula. So it says the area all in terms of x would be x squared plus y squared. But again, y is just 5 minus x. And now this is the thing that we're going to take the derivative of and, uh, you know, find all the critical points and do, do that stuff. So, all right, let me get rid of this. Um, you could multiply this out. I think probably just taking the derivative using the chain rule will even be a little bit easier. So the derivative of x squared is just 2x. Uh, we would have to use the chain rule on the 5 minus x squared. So the 2 would come out front. We'll leave the inside alone. We'll take 1 away. But then we would have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So that would just give us a, a negative 1. So we have 2x. Negative 1 and 2 would be negative 2 times 5 minus x. So let's see, it looks like we can keep simplifying. It looks like we get 2x minus 10 plus 2x. Well, 2x plus 2x is going to give us 4x minus 10. And again, that's now our derivative. So uh, in this case, we're just going to take the derivative. Again, we have to find critical points. But in this case, uh, there's nothing that makes this undefined. So we just have to take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So if we add 10, we'll have 4x equals 10. We can divide both sides by 4. That would give us x equals 5 over 2, or 2 and a half, or 2.5. And <clears throat> again, you can always check. You know, x has to be at least 0. I guess the largest x could be, since we have 20 total, it's got to be something a little bit less than 5. Right? If we, I mean, if we made it exact, if we made x exactly equal to 5, there's sort of nothing left over to make us, uh, you know, the other square with. So if we put our critical point right there in the middle, again, I could justify that this, this is in fact a minimum by thinking about the sign of the derivative. So, for example, if I take a point in the first interval, say x equals 1, and plug that into my derivative, so a prime of 1, we would just get 4 times 1, or 4, and then minus 10, that's going to equal negative 6. So that means over that interval, uh, since the derivative is negative, it tells us that the original function is decreasing. And then if we take a number bigger uh, than 2.5, but smaller than 5, I don't know, how about x equals 3? If we plug that into our derivative, we would just get, well, 4 times 3 minus 10. That's 12 minus 10, or 2. And since it's positive over that interval, that tells us now that the function is increasing. 
So yeah, it does say in fact you'll, you're going to have a minimum here at this value of 2.5. Okay, so now I go back and try to remember what the actual question asked for. It said, what's the minimum possible sum of the two areas? Well, uh, again, that's what our original formula told us. You know, we're adding the area of uh, one square plus the area of the other square. And we said we could turn that, uh, it, we, could fig we could make that into an equivalent formula by uh, replacing the y with 5 minus x. So again, we said x needed to equal 2.5. That's where we're going to have a maximum. So I'm just going to plug 2.5 into here and actually uh, get the value. So we would have 2.5 squared plus 5 minus 2.5 squared. Well, let's see, 2.5 times 2.5, that should be 6.25. Uh, yes, so 6.25. Notice inside the parentheses we're going to get another uh, 5 minus, you know, we have 5 minus 2.5. So that's going to give us another 2.5. But again, we're just squaring 2.5, so that's going to give us another 6.25. And if we add these, we'll get, looks like 1250, and it says that would be the minimum possible area. So uh, obviously, and uh, I don't know if we, if we had units on this one. Um, yes, we did have inches. So just to clarify, I guess it would be 12.5 square inches would be the minimum possible area of those two squares.